prefer the component method to solve these kind of momentum problems. In this method, we take a look at P1 and P2 after the collision and we break each one of them into their components, the horizontal and the vertical. And then we will use the components to help us solve and find any unknowns we need. We have theta 1 and theta 2. In this method, the vertical components will be equal to each other. Because as you saw the M1 come in, there isn't any uh, momentum in the vertical or up and down position. There isn't any. Therefore, P1 sine theta 1 in the up direction will equal P1 sine theta 2 in the down direction. And I'm dealing with magnitudes only. They cancel each other out, essentially. And that might be useful to find some information in certain kinds of problems. You need to be aware of it. Most important, though, is the horizontal component. This component of P1, the horizontal component, is P1 cos theta 1. This component of P2 is P2 cos theta 2. The sum of these two components will equal the momentum before and also the momentum after. There's P1 cos theta 1, there's P2 cos theta 2, and look what happens now when I bring the a momentum before over. I bring that momentum over and it equals the sum of the two components. And so what we can say is that the sum of the horizontal components, yes, it's the momentum after the collision, but the sum of the horizontal components is also the momentum before the collision of this system.